Have you ever wanted to know what it's like sailing on the world's most expensive cruise ship? Because that's the reputation that's been given to the Seven Seas Splendor, which is the newest ship in the fleet of the ultra-luxury cruise line Regent Seven Seas. We recently sailed on Splendor during a family Christmas vacation, making a full transit crossing of the Panama Canal. In this video, we'll share highlights from our embarkation day, including a peek at our cabin and the sail away festivities from the Port of Miami. I'm Andrew. I'm Diana. And this is Calling All Ports. So our cruise was billed Christmas on the Canal. It was a 16-night itinerary from Miami to Los Angeles, with stops in the Cayman Islands and Cartagena, Colombia on the Atlantic side of Panama before crossing through the Panama Canal, then making, up the way, making the way up the Pacific coastline of Central America, stopping in Costa Rica, Guatemala, and three ports in Mexico. In addition to those ports, the, the cruise had eight sea days, which included the full day it takes to transit the Panama Canal. And we love sea days, so this was really our type of itinerary. So our Christmas vacation adventures actually began in Miami a few days prior to the cruise departure. Although we've been to Florida together dozens of times, we'd actually never been to Miami before. So we wanted to take time to see the city, see the sights, and let's be real, all we wanted to do was eat some delicious Cuban food. Regent's an all-inclusive cruise line, meaning that among other perks, they provide free round-trip airfare and ground transfers between the airport and the ship. However, they'll only fly you on specific days and times, so to extend our vacation and enjoy a little bit of time in Miami, we opted out of their pre- and post-cruise travel arrangements, which does get you a little bit of a credit on part of your uh, cruise fare. So we chose to stay a couple nights at the Hilton Miami Downtown Hotel, which was a stone's throw from Biscayne Bay, uh, and it had a great view of Port Miami and all the cruise ship terminals. Uh, I only wish I'd gotten some more footage of that, that wonderful view. So for this trip, we were traveling with a big group of 10 family members, and you'll be seeing them pop up in our videos over the next few weeks, so we may as well formally introduce them. There's Andrew's parents, Bernie and Judy, my sister Teresa, her husband Hamish, Andrew's brother Peter, and our nieces and nibbling, Maya, Sophia, and Lilith. Since we'd opted out of the prearranged region ground transfers, getting to the port with a party of 10 could have been a little bit of a challenge. But fortunately, the Hilton arranged a private shuttle that could get all of us and our many bags to the port together. And uh, actually for a very reasonable $8 a person, so shout out to Magic Miami Tours. Uh, loading the luggage into the shuttle van was kind of like a game of Tetris. Uh, it almost didn't all fit, but we did get it in the end, thankfully. And so luckily, the Splendor was the only ship leaving the port that day, which is quite something since just the day before we counted seven ships departing. There must have been a lot of traffic getting into the cruise terminals that day. But for us, the shuttle from downtown Miami to cruise terminal J took less than 15 minutes door to door. And when we arrived, the porters met us at the curb, immediately grabbed our luggage, and in a couple minutes we were on the escalator heading up to the check-in area. And the check-in process couldn't have been smoother. Uh, although we arrived to the terminal a bit earlier than our assigned 1 p.m. boarding time, we didn't have to sit or wait for our group to be called. Once we passed through the security checkpoint, we were sent directly into the queue, uh, and the line moved surprisingly fast. So Regent was no longer requiring passengers to be vaccinated, though we did need to show proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test within uh, 72 hours of embarkation. But we had our vax cards ready and it was a really fast process having our passports and documents checked, getting our photos taken, and receiving our sweet key cards. It was only about, I'd say, 10 minutes from security through to be cleared to board the ship. It's exciting, we're getting on the ship. Yeah, 
So we were welcomed on board with glasses of champagne, but honestly, everything moved so fast we weren't even sure where we were at first. We entered the ship on deck five, and it took us a few minutes to get our bearings and take a look around the atrium, including all the beautiful holiday decorations. So Region Seven Seas is of the Splendor is a small cruise ship carrying just 746 passengers in its 343 all balcony suites. Sailing on such a small vessel has its many perks, one of which is how quickly the whole embarkation process moves. From the shuttle dropping us off at the, cur at the curb to eating lunch at the buffet on deck 11, it was all under a half hour. And that includes the mustard drill. So at the time of sailing, Regent required passengers to watch an online safety video in advance. So in the weeks prior to uh, to boarding, we got emails from Regent with links to the video, which we needed to confirm viewing before they'd send us our electronic boarding passes. Um, it was a really simple process, though. The video was only about a minute and a half long, although we did need to watch it a couple times because the system didn't register our first uh, one or two viewings properly. So, right, we will say that Region 7 Seas is really behind the times when it comes to integrating digital technology into the cruise experience. Most of their communication is still done through email or phone. They don't have a passenger app at all. I mean, it's 2023. It's mind boggling that they don't even have a basic app with the daily schedule, menus, etc. It's one of the few negatives of sailing with Region. But nevertheless, once we were on the ship, the mustard drill process was simple and painless. All we had to do was check in at our station when we arrived. And they could see that we watched the online videos, and so the staffers just checked our names off the list and sent us on our way. It took all of two minutes. And really, that's the way all mustard drills should be done. Although we've actually heard from travelers who were on other region voyages just a couple weeks after hours that they've returned uh, the line, the cruise line has returned to the full 30 plus minute in-person muster drill, which is a strange development. Uh, anyhow, as soon as the mustard check-in process was complete, we headed up to La Veranda on deck 11 for lunch. Uh, my parents, who we were with on the trip, are regular cruisers, and it's my dad's, I guess you'd say, ritual to go directly to the buffet upon boarding. A La Veranda is a, had a had a huge spread, especially on embarkation day. They had the you know all they pull out all the stops: the carving stations, soups and salads, cheeses, fresh fruits, uh, pastries, seafood, uh, just a great assortment of hot and cold dishes. It was an excellent, excellent opening meal. Um, and we'll have more uh, of a thorough review of the dining options aboard Splendor in a future video because we ate a lot. Yep. Uh, lunch was relatively quick, though, since we were eager to get to our cabin. While the cabins weren't ready when we first boarded, they were accessible before we had even finished lunch. So the rooms were released ahead of schedule. So sail away wasn't until 5 p.m., but we were let into our suites just after 2. And so true to Regent standards, our cabin was exquisite. Um, we had a superior suite, which is roughly 450 square feet. Splendor is an all-suite ship, and... The Superior Suite is in the third class, just above the entry veranda and deluxe veranda suites. Our Superior Suite had a European king bed, a desk vanity unit, a sofa and coffee table, and a dry bar. There was a deep balcony with a pair of loungers, a large, elegant, marble-filled bathroom with a walk-in rain shower, plus a full tub, double sinks, and a remarkable amount of storage. There was a big walk-in closet and loads of storage elsewhere throughout the cabin. So like with dining, we'll be sharing complete cabin and ship tour videos in the upcoming weeks. So we had a late afternoon sail away from Port Miami, which dampened the mood a bit, I'd say. Uh, if sail away had been earlier in the afternoon, it likely would have been more festive. But at 5 p.m., a lot of people were uh, tired from a long day of travel. They'd already been on the ship for a few hours, um, they'd, and a lot of people were already getting ready for dinner. And the weather dampened things uh, even further, like literally. It only rains in Miami something like seven days in, in the month of December uh, on average. And while the skies were sunny and clear when we boarded the ship, unfortunately, the dark skies and rain had moved in by the time the Splendor was leaving port. So the sail away party was up on the pool deck. Uh, the cruise director and a lot of the bridge crew and staff were on hand to welcome everyone aboard. And I will say, to Regent's credit, even though the storms had moved in, they still went ahead with the party, which featured uh, drinks and food and uh, music from the Regent 7 uh, Signature Orchestra. 
So Regent, Regent caters to an older, let's say gentler crowd. Um, even without the rain, the Sail Away Party is a re relatively subdued affair. The signature orchestra played, waiters were passing around hors d'oeuvres and champagne and signature cocktails. So the nice thing is with Regent being an all-inclusive cruise line, one of the great perks is that you don't need to think about paying for any food or drinks while on board. You don't need to give your room number at the bar, you simply just grab your drink and go. Following the sail away festivities on the pool deck, we headed over to the observation lounge, which is also up on deck 11. Uh, it's in the bow of the ship, just above the bridge. And so with some more drinks, uh, we enjoyed the Vistas and Ivories performance from resident cocktail pianist Gino DeLuca, uh, who was just outstanding. Gino came to be a real favorite part of our time on the Splendor. We'd catch his performances whenever we could, uh, usually a couple times a day. Uh, and I'm sure we'll be talking more about Gino in our upcoming videos because we just love, love, love Gino. Yes, yeah, so we do. Um, so we had dinner at 7.30 in Pacific Rim, which is their Pan-Asian specialty restaurant. We didn't have an advanced booking for Pacific Rim until later in the cruise, um, but they must have had openings because at lunch one of the reservation staff stopped at our table and offered us a spot. So we grabbed it and it was a delicious meal for the night. After dinner at Pacific Rim, we went to the Constellation Theater and the At That's Entertainment, which was the Welcome Aboard Variety Show, uh, which is basically just an introduction to the entertainment staff and an overview of the show lineup for the rest of the voyage. Uh, Regent doesn't allow video recording during their shows, so unfortunately we weren't able to cover uh, any of the That's Entertainment performance or really any of the entertainment options uh, in the evenings on board the Splendor. Uh, but after the show, we, gra we grabbed another drink, and really, I mean, that was pretty much it. That was the end of our embarkation day. Everyone was tired, and we headed off to a fairly early bedtime. So we look forward to sharing an inside look at the rest of our Region 7 Seas Splendor Voyage with you in a handful of more videos. So please subscribe to our channel. We're just getting this channel launched, and we appreciate all of the support. And make sure to hit the notifications button so you can stay up to date with the rest of our Region 7 Seas Splendor series in the weeks ahead. Thanks for watching us here on Calling All Ports.